What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I wanna to show you guys the latest update with Headshot, which is version two. Now for this tutorial, I'm actually gonna be using a 3D mesh model of Mixmaster Mike. We did this a couple of years ago, courtesy of the scan truck, where we got a photogrammetry model of Mixmaster Mike done. So I'm gonna be using that here for this example. And as you can see to my side here, I put it first inside of Cinema 4D. I'm only gonna be using the bust, like we can use the full CG model if we wanted to, but it's only gonna be using the head portion of it anyway. So I thought the less polygons, the better, just to get everything translated a lot faster. So I'm inside of Character Creator 4 right now, and to get started, I'm gonna bring over the FBX that I exported out from Cinema 40 into Character Creator. So I'm just clicking and dragging it here into the viewport, and when this pops up, you're just gonna bring it in as a prop, not as a character. So I'm gonna click on prop like so, and now you can see I have Mike's bust here, and you wanna make sure that it's facing forward, but before I do that, I'm actually gonna activate Headshot. Now there's several places you can find it, like right here above Mike, we have Headshot 2. On my left hand side here under content we have it and then right here if you don't see it there at all you can come under plugins and you'll see headshot version 2 here as well so i'm just going to click on it right here and when you bring it up it's going to give you two options now the image this is from headshot version 1 which i did a tutorial for so i'll leave that link up above if you want to check that one out but what we're going to click on is mesh right here and this is going to tell you what's supported so we could do the whole head we could do a cover like if you have hair or a hat or something you could do a partial mesh and this might happen if you're doing like a photogrammetry shot of yourself or you could use full body in which i just went with the whole head right here and if you look below there it's just going to tell you like you want your origin to be at zero 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 which i made sure of in cinema you want to make sure that you're front facing in the negative y position so in order to do that i'm going to come up top here right here where we have this cube i'm going to left click here and i'm going to click on front or you can just click f and you're making sure that he's facing forward if he's not you just want to rotate him around and then it says align head with camera which we have and frame the camera view to encompass the head in which we have right here so the next step is you want to just make sure that you have your 3d model selected and you want to hit start head generation and that's going to bring up this window right here this is mesh the head now we're going to get started with number one a line of points and by default you'll see right here on the generic mesh it has 24 points now we could do this manually like you could come through start clicking through and you're just aligning your points there and you'll see that you want to correlate it with this model over here but i'm just going to hit Control z because to get started i'm actually going to come to points 35 because i want to use as many points as i can and then i'm going to click on auto detection now this worked really fast you can see at least for the face area where everything is green it auto detected everything and everything looks like it's aligned there but the ones in the red those are the ones that we manually have to put in so usually i notice it goes up to 24 and then 25 to 35 you're going to have to put in manually so i'm just going to rotate it around my head here just zoom in and we're going to start with 25 which looks like it's around here and then 26 then 27 which will be on the tip of the air and you just want to rotate around just to make sure you're actually putting it on an area then we're going to go over to the other side i'm going to do 28 29 30 and then for 31 it's actually the top of the head there and you can also change your viewport too so we could just look at the top so up here in the top left i'm going to click on this i'm going to click on top and now i can align it a little bit better so this is going to be 31 and then 32 is going to be in the back of the head so again i'm going to come up here look at the back and then i'm just going to try to align it right here like so so probably around this area right here then we're going to go back to the front to finish everything off so we're going to come down here right above the adam's apple for 33 and then 34 is going to be on the inside of the lips here in which my model has his lips open but that's perfectly fine you just want to try to get it as best as you can for 34 and 35. Now, once you're happy with everything, we're going to click on this one right here, which is number two, head gen AI. And once it's done with everything, we're going to see what our bust looks like, which this is looking pretty good right here. Like you can see there's a line here and that's just because of my photogrammetry model right there. We can actually fix this later in Photoshop or whatever editing program you have, but you just want to make sure that the head bust looks pretty good. So everything is looking good here. I'm actually just going to go over to refine mesh. And then once it's done, now we can go through and refine the mesh if we need to. So with these tools over here in the top right, you can smooth it out, you can move it. What I'm going to do is hit symmetry edit. Now it looks like the mesh is already pretty good as is. If you want to kind of pull in the cheekbones, maybe a little bit, maybe right here underneath the lip, 
indent this a little bit more but i think everything is looking pretty good so this is where you could go through make any changes to the mesh if you want to and you want to make sure you do everything here because once you generate your mesh that's going to be it so over here in the lower right hand corner i want to keep my head size and then i'm going to attach the body then that's going to bring up this window right here generate character and from here we can have it on a neutral body we can have it on the male female or baby and then our texture mask too if we want the texture to only affect these certain areas this is where you can actually select that as well but for me i'm going to click on no mask since i have a full bask right here i could just bring in all the textures and then down here on texture size you could go up to 8k but i'm going to do 4k for this tutorial and then right here is where it gives a disclaimer please note that headshot version 2 only supports character creator 3 plus characters so once you're happy with all your settings in here, you wanna come down here and hit generate, but make sure you have everything done that you need because right here it tells you this step cannot be undone. And then you're gonna click generate. This next step is gonna take a few moments. So just sit back, relax, and let your machine go to work. And once everything's done, inside of your viewport on your left-hand side, you'll see what was created with character creator. And on your right-hand side is where you'll see your own 3D model. And so comparing the two, you can actually see it did a really good job converting our original 3D model over to something that we could use inside of Character Creator. And as I alluded to before, like if I scroll in here, actually, let me delete this because we don't need this anymore. So I'm just going to use the Character Creator model here. And if you look, it brought over all the texture. And as I alluded to before, in my original 3D texture, there was this seam here for some reason when it caught it in the camera it actually had different exposures on some of the cameras, I think. And so we have a line there. So if you want to actually go through and do some fix up on this, all you have to do is click your character here, come up here in the top right where it says material. And then right here, let me slide this over a little bit. You can actually go through and select what materials you want to change. So for right here, I'm going to click on body and then head. Then if I scroll down here, to where it says texture settings you can actually see now we have a texture just for the head model and you can see right there it has some glitches in there and that's for my original texture as well but if we want to fix that we can actually come down here where it says save texture i'm going to left click on this you would just save your texture and you would save it to anywhere on your desktop that you want and so i put it in the photoshop i'm using the photoshop beta because you could go through and actually use generative fill to help fill in a lot of this stuff there which really helped out a lot so i was able to go through first use the clone brush kind of get the seam out of the head and then i went to the generative tool and kind of went through fixed the eyes i fixed the ears and this is what it looks like at the end so once you're happy fixing up your texture you can then re-import that in the character creator let me show you how as you can see i have it right here i have it brought in from my file explorer i'm just going to drag it right here where it says base color give it a few moments and now you can see it fixed everything so this is all the fixes that i did there in photoshop it's not perfect i could go through and fix it a little bit more but i think i did a pretty good job there now if you wanted to add a lot more details to this if you do have it inside of your texture pack if i come over here where it says template come down here to skin we can actually come through and do some skin let me come through maybe do default mail here now you can see how i added some realistic blemishes and other stuff here to my 3d character if i want to come over change some stuff out i'm going to come right here under skin you can always come through and change a lot of these out but this is where headshot really shines inside of character creator because if you use other applications what you see is what you get and this is where having character creator is really going to shine because you could go through on the marketplace you could buy different hairstyles clothes blemishes all the things that i like so if i come over here to packs i actually do have some packs that i purchased like we have some hair packs in here let me actually scroll down let's see maybe i want to use this one right here with the side part double click on this all you do is click and drag it into here now you can see we have hair in our model there we have a lot of different hairstyles to choose from now from here you can export it to any 3d software that you want unreal engine cinema 4d blender but where i really think it shines is when we actually export this out to bring it into iclone so we could do things like facial expressions you can add your motion capture or any animations that you might have in there so if we want to export this out to iClone, it's really easy. All we do is come up here, make sure you have your character selected. So I went through, added some clothes and everything to them. I'm going to come up here to file, come down here to export, and then I'm going to send the iClone. I'm just going to send the iClone and it's actually going to save it. And then it's going to open up iClone for us. And once we're inside of iClone 8, you could do stuff like, let's zoom in here a little bit. Let me pull back. We have our character in here that was brought over from character creator. So you could come through, let's maybe add some animation to them. So 
let's click through here we'll see what type of animations we could get so i always like this one right here where it just says emote i'm going to click and drag it here on my character so now you can see he's doing like different facial expressions and everything you can see the eyes moving and all that and this is looking pretty nice right now you can go through you can always go through and fine tune your model there if you're not happy with it but i think for this example it's looking pretty good then if i also come down here let's maybe change out the platform so if i come through here let's look at some different lighting situations that we have come down here to lightroom this is really going to enhance it and everything so i'm using the back room coming from the left there and that's looking really nice there as well so you can see how bring it into iClone would just really enhance it. You can see we have some subsurface scattering going through the airs there that look really nice. That's looking really cool. And then you can also come through and add your own motion capture. So I have tutorials on my site about iClone. How you can use stuff like Rococo or Xsan suits to bring in your own motion capture. But I think this is the way to go because you can bring it in here do all your animations and then bring it out to all your different 3d applications hopefully you guys find this useful i'm really digging headshot part two as you know i was never one to really use metahuman stuff i usually like the real illusion stuff because i found it easier to use and so once headshot 2 came out i found it to be the perfect solution to do some of the stuff that i work on so if you find this helpful make sure you leave a comment down below subscribe to the channel if you're new and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you in the next video i'll see you soon take care